in the past I have made quite a few videos about the so called Schmidt trigger circuit. You can find it on the World Wide Web, perhaps on Wikipedia, etc. etc. And it is a very important circuit. Uh, it's in many cases used for high frequency, more or less high frequency applications. Uh, when the voltage goes uh, uh, to a somewhat too high limit, the Schmidt trigger switches. That can be on a high frequency, but in this case I want to show it on not on a high frequency, but on say when you want to drive uh, whatever kind of circuit with a uh, voltage. When the voltage gets somewhat too high, the Schmidt trigger will uh, switch something on, on or off. Here is that whole uh, experimental setup. It's a breadboard circuit, uh, like I always make them. Uh, some things to tell. Uh, a relay is used here. It's a 12 volt relay and it has a DC resistance of 280 ohms. Here are three uh, transistors and I will tell more about that. Here is a potentiometer with which the bias of the second transistor is set. And here is another potentiometer at the input that sets, sets uh, the switch voltage where the circuit wants to switch. And it's very important that the Schmidt trigger is the only circuit, as far as I know, that can switch in the order of one tenth or one hundredth or perhaps even one thousandth of a volt. So when you add here a voltage, in this case a positive voltage, opposite to ground, ground is negative here, uh, there is a very precise switch moment. And uh, with op amps, there are uh, many circuits with op amps, with comparator circuits, comparators, that do the same thing, but uh, I've tested it over and over. Uh, there's always, say, a kind of hesitation moment. So, uh, when the reference voltage, voltage is here, and the uh, voltage to, uh, that has to activate something is here, or otherwise reversed, uh, you can use the op-up in both ways, uh, there is, a, say, a kind of current flowing, uh, at the moment where uh, the op amp has to switch from zero to one, say to the uh, the positive voltage, etc., or the negative voltage, and the Schmidt trigger does not have that problem. So this is the circuit that always works. It doesn't have that problem. It surely switches, and you can say. Compare it to a marble on a seesaw. So here is the seesaw. Uh, the marble is rolling, of course, not in this way, but in the other way. And on a sudden moment, the seesaw uh, uh, goes down. When the marble is at this critical position here, and here we are talking about one hundredth of a volt uh, that the uh, circuit switches. I want to demonstrate it. I only have 15 minutes, but anyway, I'm sure it will be successful. Um, this is that circuit, like I told, and there are two, say, more or less minor problems in the circuit. And they are here. 
Here is the 470k potentiometer that sets the bias of the uh, second transistor. And you can use, perhaps <coughs> in a better way, two fixed value resistors here of 220k. I have left this in that circuit because this also the bias, biasing that the second transistor has also an effect on the switch moment. And here is that first uh, very important uh, um, trimmer potentiometer that is say directly responsible for the voltage where the circuit wants to switch. And it has to be in a very low um, ohms range. That also makes it somewhat cumbersome in sometimes anyway. Uh, I've tried to repair that in a certain way by using a 1k potentiometer here, bridging that with a uh, 1k fixed value resistor and here from the wiper to ground a 190 ohm uh, resistor. You can see them all here. And the reason is, and you can surely find out that yourself when doing experiments on a breadboard, etc. etc. The reason is that uh, we get say into a better position of the trimmer here, that potentiometer here, trimmer potentiometer on that carbon layer. But of course, when you want to make such a circuit in real and in a final definite circuit, uh, try to find out here, instead of that small potentiometer here, two fixed value resistors, and also try to find out the best fixed value resistors here, in that very first stage, where in fact the switch moment is acting. Pink connections, and then let's see what the circuit can bring. Here is a protective diode, can be a 1N4005 or a 1N5408. Standard decoupling circuit, and of course this is in a way, in a certain way, a kind of measuring circuit. It has to be supplied with a, a stable voltage. That doesn't mean that you cannot use it uh, with an unstabilist, unstable voltage supply. Uh, but anyway. So, uh, here is the, the whole setup. At first I want to demonstrate what happens when here I uh, change the uh, input voltage and that is the voltage that is coming here into the circuit here positive negative and it is between say 12 and 18 volts let's see what happens here is by the way the voltage that is sent in it's now 14.73 volts though the circuit is no not activated at the moment so, switch out the lights. And now the input voltage to the first transistor is changed. In the order of 14.7 to say 18 volts or so. Now the relay switch is on. And now I bring the input, the input voltage back. Now it switches off. Again, switch it on and turn the potentiometer here, uh, turn the voltage back, it switches off again. The very important thing is that the whole circuit, like I told, acts like a marble on a seesaw. So there is no hesitation moment in between. It switches absolutely good on and off. 
and perhaps there is of course a kind of hysteresis. You can find that out yourself, uh, whether such a hysteresis is uh, necessary or not necessary. Anyway, the, the, the good thing, most important thing, is that it absolutely switches on on a certain voltage. So I will demonstrate it again. Here is the voltage that is sent in to the Schmidt trigger. I lift it up very, very slowly. And you will hear a click on a certain moment. So now it's on and off. That's the most important thing that I want to tell. There is a certain hysteresis. You can uh, say <coughs> study that for yourself. Say search for the exact moment where it switches on. And then uh, lift the, say the test voltage back to a lower level and then see when it switches off. That tells you the hysteresis, uh, the two voltages where it switches on and off. And this circuit <coughs> sorry, is for instance usable for all kinds of purposes, especially say uh, a, a battery charger. There will be a, a very uh, specific moment, uh, not moment, but a voltage where the uh, charger can be switched off with the help of this Schmidt trigger circuit. Perhaps on the World Wide Web you see other Schmidt trigger circuits. They are, in many cases, as far as I know, uh, perhaps made for high frequency applications, but this is say the Schmidt trigger circuit that works with uh, different static voltages on its input. So let's look again to the schematic. Important to tell, I couldn't demonstrate it, that you can hear by tuning this uh, trimmer, this potentiometer, you can align the voltage where the Schmidt trigger switches off and on exactly in one hundredths of a volt by tuning here this trimmer, this potentiometer. And also, like I told, uh, this 470k potentiometer has some effect on the switch moment, but the most biggest, the biggest effect is here, with that uh, potentiometer here. And, of course, like I told, it is in fact a very low resistance where everything happens. Anyway, I think it's a very good circuit. I've used it in the past many times. And well, it's also a practical circuit. You can go to higher switch voltages and you can also go to higher supply voltages. It will work in the order of 9 to 24 volts even 30 volts. Of course, uh, well, in such a case you must be a little bit careful not to burn out that first transistor by, uh, say, uh, finding out a resistor here that can withstand that voltage. And important, this resistor and that resistor, these resistors in fact form a voltage divider. Anyway, Uh, no reason to worry. The circuit works. Works very good. Thanks for watching. And I am now on the 15 minutes of my camera.